Hello everyone, I am Tacit and welcome to the Gems of War Campaign 2, we gate day 3. So today we're going to be finishing up the ward, wor uh, blah, 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 world lore event. And uh, aside from that, we also got the pet battle going on. It is one that's been around for um, uh, a while though. But uh, if you haven't gotten it maxed yet, we got ourselves the little mini mall. Uh, it's for, oh, excuse me. It's for a, uh, just eight. That's <laughs> why we're a little late. But, um, we got the, uh, Drifting Sands pet right here. Uh, which can, uh, synergize a little bit with the, uh, event week. But, uh, it was one of the ones that came out with the very first set, if I'm not mistaken, when pets first came out. So, it's, uh, had plenty of time. Uh, we do have a very, very shiny, uh, well, two things. I personally have the, uh, 100 gem thing today. But, uh, everyone has the two Imperials. We're actually getting quite a bit of Imperial this week. We're also probably going to get something shiny tomorrow for um, Thanksgiving in this area. So maybe we'll get like 100 gems or, you know, something special. I'll just have to wait and see. But, um, yeah, 2 Imperial with 6 brown. Uh, or, sorry, not 6 brown. I forgot 9 brown. I forgot the um, the other one gives 6. The uh, legendary one, the mythic one, gives 9. It's been a very long time since we've gotten mythic deeds on Adventure Board. Actually, I should probably go for that first. It's too shiny to not immediately go for. Um... I guess we could still get away with Phoenicia. Phoenicia doesn't do as good on the Mythic Battle. They're so rare that they had to come around, but I'll still run it against it. Not too big a deal. But anyways, hello everyone. Hope all of you have been doing well this Thanksgiving Eve. Hello, Lestat. Hello, Isabel. Hello, Ricardo. Hello, Bill. Uh, hello, Cookie. Uh, and hello, everyone else. Welcome, welcome. We'll still be streaming tomorrow night, same time as always. And we'll probably put a little bit of Animal Crossing at the end of the stream. This is something at least uh, a little festive because I don't think Chips of War is going to be doing too much. Obviously, we have the little skulls. Uh, I don't think we're getting anything new for it though. And um, other than like maybe like a little bit of extra resources off Adventure Board, I don't think we're getting anything directly for it. And a little mows around that you can kill for 500 gold, which are kind of like little turkeys, little golden turkeys. Hello, Mr. Jesse. Welcome. Yeah, Animal Crossing has a lot of cute set coming in. And the event's basically just one big cookout outside. Actually, probably how quite a few gatherings are going to be going <laughs> because of the virus. I don't think I've ever celebrated Thanksgiving outside. Can't think of a single year where that has happened. Ah, oh, thank you for that, Bill Warhammer. Greatly appreciated. Also, gosh, these Ritz are so small. I'm still really surprised they haven't buffed this yet to so at least like 50 or something. 10 Ritz is one-tenth of a um, single color deed. That is how little it is. You'd have to get 10 of them to even make a single deed. Or, you know, 10 events. Not 10 uh, not ten of these little Ritz, but 10 of this uh, of event of the Ritz would have to occur for you to um, have enough. Speaking of that, I can actually craft purple deeds today. Not sure if I want to craft purple deeds though. But we do have it as an or I do have it as options. It's different for every person. The main thing I want to see there is imperial deeds. I've only ever seen it once though. Hey, I got a celestial from it. Nice. So that's actually not increased at this rate, or on this game mode, so that's actually relatively rare. <coughs> I think it's 1 in 1,000, if I'm not mistaken. Or is it even lower in a normal battle? I don't remember the drop rate these days. I believe it was 1 in 1,000. And then in Explore, it's like 1, um, it's like, um, or sorry, not 1 in 1,000. I mean, uh, 1 in 100, <laughs> not 1 in 1,000. But, um, it's normally about 1 in 100. I believe in Explore, it's about 1 in 33 or so. Somewhere around there. <coughs> uh, I'll take the poke. Pokety poke. Uh, what else? Go for Explosion. Uh, what else, what else? Take the other thing over. 
Grab our skull. Take our red over there. Gotta get Finisi up again. <coughs> Gosh, it's so tanky. So tanky as a mythic or mythic uh, battle thingy. Trying to kill my Phoenicia too. They know. They know too much. Gosh, how much loop are they going to get? It's not even a loop team to any capacity. Uh, let's see. Well, I guess it has that thing that technically makes it loop team. Phoenicia, you're so close. Don't get scold. You're so close to the win. Oh, that's not an extra turn. Oh, it gives it to them though. No! Phoenicia, no! No! We can actually lose this. We're actually gonna lose this with Phoenicia team. Uh, that's problematic. I can't even get a convert now. The extra turn Skull got was too much value. Too much value. Luckily, we can just restart these with no uh, problem. Gosh, you're gonna make me have to bring out Zuga for something? Real quick. Uh, obviously, Phoenicia is not really made <laughs> to be taken on a battle like that. Uh, generally, when you uh, use Phoenicia, you want to one shot the team. At most, two shot the team. This thing is outside of two shot range. So we'll just auto win with the Zuga. Auto kill. There we go. Dead. Uh, somehow he's not dead already. And now he's dead. <laughs> there we go. Easy as that. Give me my Imperials. Give me those Imperial deeds. And now we have six green kills. Right, that's out of the way. Let's go to get the... Uh, are we even going to bother with the mini ball? Might just leave it there. I don't know. We could get it for the pet food if nothing else. Uh, we might. We're already going to have the team set, the banner set. We'll probably go for the mall. And then we'll go do the entirety of the Warlord event. Or however much we need left. Actually, I didn't even check. Did we still need any of it? I still want to do some regardless. Um, let's see. Yeah, we still need some. So we'll go throw down all of our battles. Ed. We'll throw down every last sigil. That's the goal. We'll throw every last sigil until it's zero. Also, Isabel, where are you on leaderboard? Uh, you're in sixth place. Nice. Yeah, you carried us. Look at that. You're like, um... You're almost like half the guild's points. <laughs> close to it. Not exactly. But very close to half the guild's points. Okay. Uh, let's see. Not that. We'll go do that soon. Let's go over to the dungeons. Uh, let's see. I said, hello, Imperial. Welcome, welcome. Yeah, I'll take that over. Grab our explosion. Oh, why am I still using this team? Whoops, wrong team. No, we already have it set, so might as well use it now. Isn't there a cosmetic Thanksgiving pet? Um, it's never had one in the past. Is a holiday that doesn't have a pet, if I'm not mistaken. I don't think it does. Let me double check. I'm pretty sure it's one of those few holidays that actually does not have a pet. Surprisingly. I'll go check it as soon as we finish out dungeons. I'm pretty sure it doesn't have a pet. I'm like 99% certain the Thanksgiving event in Gems of War does not have a pet. Doesn't mean they don't celebrate it in-game. It just is a uh, holiday that doesn't have a pet associated with it. Kind of like things like St. Patrick's Day doesn't and a couple other things. Like, not literally every single holiday has a pet associated to it. That'd be a lot of pets per year <laughs> if they uh, did. Like, New Year actually does Yeah, New Year's actually does have a pet associated to it. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I don't think there's any Thanksgiving pet. Um, oh, yeah, there wouldn't be a way to control fine for it, I just realized. Because, um, yeah, it doesn't get picked up. Like, for example, the New Year's pet that just passed. Where'd it go? I just saw it. But uh, let's take this one, for example. The um, Gems of War Anniversary. If we type in Anniversary, it doesn't come up. Because for whatever reason, that screen doesn't get um, checked for the uh, search on a troop. But yeah, I don't think there was any Thanksgiving pets. There'd be no way to directly search for it in the game, so <laughs> not 100% certain. I kind of forgot about that. But uh, last I recall, there wasn't any Thanksgiving pets ever in the game. It's one of those few holidays, um, somewhat major holidays, that doesn't have one. There are plenty of other holidays that obviously don't have a pet, though. That just happens to be one of them. 
Ah, uh, so take that, take that. Get our last few pets in. And now we can more lore vent grind. What lore vent's kind of weird this week. Like, it's not the easiest, not the hardest. Basically, it's spam King Mikhail. This is uh, pretty much the best way to go as far as the event overall. It gets to hit all enemies, which is why I get so much value. And of course, we have the extra spell damage, which makes it get all of its value. Normally, King Miguel wouldn't be the greatest of options, but, uh... When you give it, like, 200% spell increase, or whatever you have their medals up to, that's quite a bit of damage output. But yeah, are you guys doing anything special for Thanksgiving? We're just kind of huddling around. We already have most of the food prepped. Actually, that's what I was eating before the stream started. <laughs> Getting into it some. Not everything's already done, but uh, a good number of it. Just so we don't have to deal with it tomorrow. Um, I'll go for split. Grab our explosions. Phoenicia. Explosion again. Only three, but it's enough value to get everything we need. Zoom family dinners. Oh, that's funny. Oh, I would never do that. <laughs> I would never do that. For one, my, most of my family wouldn't know how on earth to do that. <laughs> Uh, let's see, we'll throw that over. And <laughs> not funny, it's dystopia. I don't know, it's just a year to have to deal with it. By next year, uh, enough vaccines would probably be uh, tested good enough. That, um, probably wouldn't be as big a thing. Like, we'll probably have to do it this year and potentially next year. But beyond that, um, it probably won't be lingering much further than that, as far as precautions. Dealing with it for two years is year isn't too big a deal. Uh, let's see. I'll take that over for now. There we go. How many uh, everythings do we get? Of course, I always find it funny. We get the most amount of copies of troops. When we no, don't need any more copies of their troop anymore. Uh, at least it gets converted to brown pet food, if nothing else. But um, it's basically just brown pet food in a different name. But um, whenever we actually need copies of its pet, we'll get like one every time. And when we don't, we'll get like three, four, five. <laughs> Seems to always be the case. But anyways, uh, let's go focus on the World Lore event. So of course, metal setup is uh, pretty much all into the metals, except with 20% uh, mana start. Just to kind of get things rolling a little bit, especially since it's so cast oriented. Um, where is. Oh, that. I'm like looking for the event in the thing. That's not where the event is. Let's go and kill everything here. Uh, gosh, why are all of them level 10? That's not nice. But uh, team we're using is uh, plus two yellow, plus one brown, minus one purple. With double King Mikhail done, bring her paladin. Main premise is uh, double the King Mikhail into support troops behind it. it, is basically what this team is. Uh, we don't really have a good Empower Man Accumulator, though. Actually, I don't think we have any Empower uh, Man Accumulator. It's because, uh, actually, we might not even have an Empower Troop, period, for this event. Except maybe, like, um... Uh, what's his name? Just because he's a striker, I think. Um, but I don't think we really do. Let me double check. Because, um, the restriction is Warriors and Strikers. 
And, um, yeah, that's what I was referring to. I forgot his name. It was Tall. That was the one I was referring to. But I forgot. Astral Spirit also counts as a striker. Um, interesting. It counts as striker, even though it's um, both uh, board control and the thing. That's actually probably your best man accumulation option if you really wanted something. It doesn't actually destroy gems, but it um, it can manipulate the board in a way that can help you a lot. Which can still be good. Oh, depending on the time zone, it's technically Thanksgiving. Or get in there. Oh, that thing better not escape. Uh, so you got a question. Uh, are the mythic in the event keys can drop on the glory and gem, or they are out since they are in event keys? Um, no, um, mythics are always in the glory, gem, guild, and VIP chest drop table. The way that they work is whenever there's an exclusive mythic for a week, it is the only mythic within the glory, gem, guild, and VIP uh, key drop table. However, when it's uh, not, which is the rest of the month, like right now, um, there is, they are still in there. Uh, it's just every single mythic in the game, aside from the only, uh, Soul Forge only ones. So, uh, if you go open, uh, Glory Gem Guild or VIP keys right now, yes, you will have a chance at a mythic. It's obviously very low chance, but you do have a chance at a, uh, mythic. And it would drop one of pretty much any mythic in the game, with the exclusion of all of the Soul Forge only, uh, mythics. Which, uh, includes, um, uh, Soul Forge only mythics include, uh, Zugoth, Exynos... And that's it, actually. And then every other mythic would drop within the drop table. And you'd basically just get one out of uh, a random mythic in the entire game. Actually, we could even go in global chat right now and probably see someone getting a mythic. Though not too many people would be opening keys right now. It's not really a common key opening time. So much so, there's actually no people <laughs> getting a mythic within the last hour. But um, it is still possible. It's just um, Thursday is a very unlikely day for people to be opening keys. The most likely days are uh, Monday, because everyone gets it from their guild. And whenever a new mythic comes out, because everyone's going for the new mythic. Very rarely will you see, uh, see it like at the end of the week or mid-week or anything like that. But um, yes, they are still in drop table. As well as event keys, except the uh, event key ones are targeted. Uh, the way that event keys work is they're the mythic specifically within the kingdom of the event week. So right now, for example, the Drifting Sands uh, mythics are specifically in the event key drop table, which includes um, uh, Vespera and... Um, what's that one? Uh, Scorpius. Vespera um, is a okay troop. Actually, they're both kind of okay. They're both very situational when you would use them, though. Definitely not really mythics you would go out of your way for. But a Glory Gem Guild and, Guild and VIP cash... I can't speak. Guild, Glory, Gem, and VIP chests uh, still have every drop in the game. As far as their mythic output. I know. Um, that's, that's kind of funny. Yeah, I, I've still been needing to try losing weight. I was kind of joking earlier that we need to go do like a ring fit adventure stream every single day. Since that's a lot more streamable than doing our treadmill walks. <laughs> Maybe as a New Year's resolution. Ta! <laughs> See how long that lasts. That or try doing it uh, daily and have a weekly stream about it. <laughs> that would be funny. That game actually has a surprisingly high amount of content. Like, I could probably play it for another 50 hours. Playing it like an hour a day, exercising with it, and still not be done with it. It's actually a very beefy game. It has like a whole RPG system and everything behind it. And the skill tree, like, uh, looks already pretty decent initially. And then it expands, and it's like, whoa, that's big. And then it expands again, and it's like, <laughs> what is this? Uh, let's see, we'll take that over. We'll throw that down. The game has a surprising amount of depth. The storyline for it's kind of shallow, though. But, um, obviously, it's an exercising game. <laughs> but a storyline that's often taking, like, months because of how it's spread out. 
since it's not really a game you could really binge. <laughs> because you'd be way too uh, worn out. Uh, let's see. We'll go and throw that down. Get our Dawnbringer in there. We're playing Ring Fit Adventure while we're citing Moby Dick. <laughs> Um, are the Apocalypse Troops always in the drop table? Yes. They are. That is correct. Yeah, the Apocalypse Troops, oddly enough, are a little bit elusive. Uh, the reason for this... Well, there's two reasons for this. One is, uh, they aren't associated to a kingdom. So they're never in the event queue drop table. And also, because they're not associated to a kingdom, their priority for crafting is a lot lower. Because a lot of them are pretty average, um, or even bad in some cases, and they don't help you with kingdom upgrades. So not only do people put off trying to get them, but they also don't have a kingdom targeting system. So realistically, the only viable way of obtaining the Apocalypse Troops, even though it's not the only way, but the only realistic way of obtaining them is, yes, to craft them in Soul Forge when they appear. However, yes, they are in the drop table, um, pretty much always, unless an exclusive Mythic is in there. Uh, the chance of specifically getting them is obviously extremely low, but they are indeed in the drop table. However, realistically, um, you're going to diamond them at some point. However, there's so many better priorities to go for first. They're actually some of the last troops you would ever bother getting, which actually makes them kind of rarer in a sense. But, um, yeah, I wouldn't really bother with them. The only Apocalypse troop I would probably go out of my, uh, your way for is um exynos because there's achievement related to it not because he's good and uh famine because um even though he has been much better in the past he's the strongest of all of the five apocalypse troops that was about the only two every other one i'd probably just ignore and even famine is current state in the game i don't feel like i've used him this entire year um he got nerfed quite a few times both directly and indirectly and at the current state he's in, he's uh, kind of average. It's very situational, and if he'd be good. Oh, so hello, Tyrion. Welcome. Plague was your first mythic? Nice. Plague's not too, too bad. The biggest issue with him is he doesn't have any board control. If they just added, like, an explosion onto P Plague, even if it was a small amount, kind of like what Infernus has, he has, like, five uh, gem explode. Um, Plague would actually be good. If they simply gave it, like, Infernus's 5 ex uh, Gem Explode or something. Just some amount of mana accumulation. It actually wouldn't be that bad. It has a lot of Disable option. Uh, basically, uh, Azura's actually Plague. Uh, just by a different name. She doesn't have Disease or anything. But as far as overall stat reduction, due to the fact that she has man accumulation, um, she's actually more effective at lowering stats in many instances than Plague himself is, which is pretty funny. But Azura, uh, an epic troop that you can... Uh, oh, never mind. It's not for free. For, wait, is it for the free one? Yeah, it is. She's the free epic for that place. I keep forgetting. Um, I mentioned that sometimes in the past. I almost forget these days, though, that she is. But yeah, she's the free epic for um, Rolantis. And she's basically a better Plague than Plague as far as lowering stats. That's how bad Plague is and how badly he needs mana accumulation to actually be viable. Because they literally just add mana accumulation to his mechanic and it became viable. <laughs> Azura uh, 2 is still not even used that much though. But uh, she does do Plague's role better than Plague. Oddly enough. This with slightly worse traits. Uh, yes, Famine used to be the meta. Famine was meta for about a year, maybe a year and a half. Um, he used to be 20 mana costs. Well, there was a lot of things that made him uh, very overpowered. He initially came out at 24 mana costs, but he was uh, eventually buffed like very soon after and left that way for quite a time. And basically, he was 20 mana costs. Nothing in the entire game had immune to mana drain, 
which that alone was absolutely insane with him. Uh, they're used to not be immune to mana drain. Um, so that was obviously really strong for Famine, since that's his whole premise. Um, and he used to have Jinx. I really wish they didn't get rid of Jinx on him, though. I feel like there's no good Jinx builds, and uh, Jinx builds were actually used back when Famine was a thing. Basically, what Jinx does is it lowers your uh, gem mastery by half. Uh, this doesn't mean it lowers your mana surge by half. Uh, it just lowers those numbers, which goes into a formula, which then determines your uh, mana surge. However, with two of them, you can lower it by a little bit more than half in most situations. And um, basically, it drastically reduces your uh, chance of surging. With only one, my values would still be like 55 or something, maybe even a little bit higher. However, with two of them, uh, I'm pretty sure it would be around a 30, 40-ish percent uh, surge chance. And while this doesn't do too much, it makes, combined with disease, uh, or not with disease, but, um, well, you could combine it with disease, but um, combined with mana drain, um, it really keeps mana uh, low enough that um, they normally can't recover. And with his 20 mana cost, you can normally quick and man accumulate him pretty quickly and then um, just kill for like one shots off his uh, boost ratio. Uh, but yeah, he was, uh, because of course, stats were lower at the time as well when he existed. Obviously, stats are higher now than they were then, uh, which is one of the reasons why Famine isn't as good because he doesn't scale with that. But um, yeah, stats used to be lower. There didn't used to be any immune to mana drain. He used to have 20 mana cost and he used to have Jinx. Those are the four things that, um, for the most part, um, made him better in the past and doesn't make him as good now uh let's see i'll take that over because of course now he has 24 mana cost instead of 20 uh there's immune to mana drain which is probably the biggest deal breaker with him unless you're up against a team that has no immune to mana drain um what are the other two factors i just mentioned uh stats are higher now which prevents him from um scaling as well and he doesn't have jinxed anymore I forget what they replaced it with, but it was completely useless, whatever they replaced it with. Uh, what do we go for here? Take a brown. But yeah, Jinx used to be meta. I mean, not Jinx. Um, Famine used to be meta. That was, like, very long time ago. Not, like, the longest, longest of time ago, but, um, like, three years ago? Two years ago? Somewhere around there. It was really popular for Guild Wars 2, which was very annoying. It kind of reminded me of back when um, Silent One was meta, when the game first started. It reminded me a lot of that meta. Basically, like, whoever got the mana-related uh, ability down first won. When the game first started, it was uh, Silent One. Then it shifted to, uh, eventually, Famine. And in the current state of the game, there's not really a version of it. Spirit Fox kind of was for a short duration at some point. But um, in the current state of the game, nothing really mana drains effectively quick enough to really do that. Or silences or any kind of mechanic. Plus, there's immune to all that stuff now. So you can easily build around it. You pulled uh, War in the War Lore event shop last week? Nice. Yeah, it's one of the Apocalypse troops. Uh, it can happen. Um, the a drop table for those are based on whatever can be used. So um, you know, while the chance is very rare that you end up doing it, it's definitely possible. I forget how many I've gotten from these events, but I'm pretty sure it's been about five or six since they've existed over the last few years, two years, two and a half, whatever it's been. But um, yeah, even right now, um, from opening these things, while the chance is very unlikely that you get it from the small amount of eligible troop things, it is possible to get some mythics, uh, specifically the list of mythics that you can get are the following. And if you ever want to know, if you truly want to like try for one, I wouldn't really advise trying to get troops by this method though. If you get them, you get them. I wouldn't go out of your way for them though. Just because the amount of gems you would have to spend is pretty absurd. Um, however, uh, there is theoretically a really small chance this week that you could get Aquaticus, Flame of Anu, uh, Jotnar Storm Shield, King um, uh, Bloodwood, and Tanya, pretty much all are bad except Aquaticus, and even that I don't feel like I use much. Um, but yeah, all five of those are theoretically possible within the drop table of um, the eligible troops this week. Uh, I wouldn't go out of your way for it because it's so expensive trying to do it, but uh, whatever tier you normally go to, you have a small, very ridiculously small chance that you could get one of them, and that's applicable to all events. Whatever the, uh, whatever the mythics are that you can use during the event, you have a super minuscule chance of actually getting when you uh, buy the event. So eventually you will get them if you haven't already. 
Uh, even my Switch account, I believe, ended up getting one that way. I've gotten like five or six on my main account that way. Though that's after like um, hundreds of these events. So it's definitely pretty rare. Though I don't normally go too deep. I normally go for like tier three, tier four or so. Not really worth going too deep into them normally. Also, uh, there's a reason why I have Paladin. There's a really specific reason. There we go. <laughs> Paladin's not there just for show. He has a specific uh, goal, and that is to kill Valraven. <laughs> He's in my team almost solely to kill Valraven. That and Fur plus one yellow, which is the main thing he's being used for. But um, his secondary role is target Valraven. He's not there just for show. Even though we don't touch him like almost every battle. Also, Paladin used to be meta back when the game started. There were a couple different metas at the time. And three Paladins and the Templar at one point was one of the strongest teams in the game. Especially if you didn't have Mythics at the time. Because obviously a lot of people had low rarity stuff. And it was one of the strongest low rarity teams in the entire game when the game started. Or soon after the game started. I don't think it was like directly then. Actually, uh, Rockworm was uh, the most broken troop when the game first first started. Because it used to have um, gem spawn based on magic. Rather than a static 7 that it currently has. Whereas before it used to do it based on its magic. I uh, got Champion of Anu the other day. Is he any good? Ah, uh, he's kind of average. Champion of Anu. Which one is that? Uh, isn't that the one that does Foya E with the silence on target and you have to do it on first slot normally so that he hits all the troops below? Uh, I believe he gives one stat to all blues per turn. Um, well, he definitely does if that's a troop. But, um, yeah, he's okay. Nothing too special. Uh, he can be used uh, occasionally. Um, his mana cost is pretty high for what it is, though. And I wouldn't really go out of your way to really use them much. Uh, however, earlier on in the game and into mid-game, uh, if you get him fully traded, um, he could be somewhat effective into blue teams. He can also be used on blue guild war day. Um, even though there's normally better options, it's a good support troop for blue guild war day. The earlier in the game you are, the better he is. He falls off increasingly as the game moves forward. That's a problem with a lot of troops in the current state of the game, too. Like, even if they aren't changed at all, they eventually become dated. Due to how mechanics shift and stuff like that. I think one of the funniest examples of that is Lady Sapphira. Her, in her in exact state she is in right now, was one of the strongest troops in the game at one point within the game. For like half a year to a year. The exact stats, the exact everything she currently has. Uh, and she was meta for about a year. Yet now she's like one of the worst troops in the game. Despite the fact she hasn't been changed a single time since then. This is what happens when stats go higher. Some things that scale in a different way just are horrible after. Because what made Lady Sapphira so good is that we, she one shot, she had enough true damage to one shot about 20% of the troops in the game at the time. And anything she couldn't one shot, she two shotted. Uh, is obtaining imps kind of the same as Apocalypse? Yes, they're kind of pointless. Um, they are open, uh, they're not always in a drop table though. The way that uh, imps work is they're available for two specific months each. The uh, Which one is available right now? It's the... Is it still Spooky Imp? I forget. Is it Spooky Imp or Winter Imp right now? Let's see. Let me try to remember some dates. August, um, August and September is Autumn Imp. Which means October and November... Okay. Um, it's uh, Spooky Imp right now still. Uh, and then um, December and January is Winter Imp. Then February, March is uh, Impa Love. Uh, then April and uh, May is uh, Spring Imp. Then um, June and July is um, Summer Imp. And then it goes back to Autumn Imp in August and um, September. And then the cycle repeats. 
Uh, they can always be found in Soul Forge, though, in the sense that uh, if they appear in the Soul Forge um, yearly uh, on their rotation, so you can still find them out of season. Um, I believe legendary tasks can also drop them out of season. Uh, a legendary task can drop a gnome even if it's currently not the gnome that is in the key drop table. However, as far as the key drop table is concerned, um, it's only one gnome for two months, and currently it's Spring Imp. I mean, uh, sorry, it's current. Uh, <laughs> currently, it is um, it is a Spooky Imp. I mean, and he'll be available for uh, only a few more days actually, until um, he will come back next year. But uh, yeah, as soon as going to switch to Winter Imp. Actually, Winter Imp's the strongest imp of, out of all of them, by the way. Um, out of the six imps, Winter Imp is the only one that I would say is potentially viable as a troop that you would use outside of just collecting. Uh, the main reason for this is it does true damage, yet it still scales its damage the same way as all the physical damage ones. Which obviously makes it much better because it's true damage. Um, but yeah, they even buffed it um, like a year or two ago. Uh, made the imps a little bit better, and this greatly improved uh, Winter Imp even more. Because obviously, they all get the same buff, and it improves true damage a lot more than it improves physical damage. So, uh, he gained a lot of benefit from that. It's not, like, the greatest thing in the game, but um, Winter Imp is a viable build. Like, you can build into Winter Imp still. It's not the best thing in the game, but it's uh, buildable. Hello, Bushka. Hello, Kelly. Welcome, welcome. But yeah, Winter Imp will be available in like a week or so. Um, like, for example, the next Mythic that comes out, you'll have access to Winter Imp. When it comes out um, on the 10th, I think it was? When was this? Like, the Friday. Sorry, the 11th. Or sorry, the 4th. I'll get the right data right eventually. But uh, December 4th would probably be a good time to try for it. Because you'll be able to try for the new Mythic and... You'll have a chance at Winter Imp if you don't already have it. Also, if you already have it, um, there are cop the teams that use two copies of it. Theoretically, you can almost even get away with three copies. Though two copies, I think, is the furthest you could really push it, realistically. And still make a viable team. And if anyone has any other questions, anything else you want me to go over, let me know. Oh, we're so close to that level. Not like close, close, but uh, close. <laughs> I get in there. If you have any, uh, anyone still has questions, let me know. We'll have a code. Um, I should probably handle the code now. I'm so not used to handing out codes because we've been uh, not handing out codes for so long. I keep doing it at weird times in my stream now. Like I had it like so streamlined before. And now it's like, I haven't handed out codes for so long. It's like, oh yeah, I almost forgot I even have codes to hand out. <laughs> Let me go do that. Because this computer is slow enough that it'll take me a moment to even get to it. Since I always check it through the other computer so it doesn't uh, get in the way. Uh, I go into next battle. While we're waiting on that. Also, it might be our last battle for the World Lore event. Uh, let's see, then we'll probably go through an explore too. I want to get at least one chest drop. Uh, where on earth is the thingy? There's the thingy. Oh, that's not what I wanted. Uh, that's also not what I wanted. Go on, type, function. The struggle of using three different keyboards. I have a keyboard set up for the one computer, keyboard set up for the other computer, and keyboard set up for the switch. We're all keyboard out here. Three different keyboards for three different things. But uh, there it goes. Go. There's the redeem code used on gemsofwar.com for the game code section. Your invite code can be found in your settings menu, whatever your game says in the bottom left corner underneath settings. Uh, redeem code's right over there in chat. Just copy paste the random numbers and letters so we're starting with 2Y. And hey, it doesn't start with something controversial this time. Um, last night's was pretty funny if you didn't see what it was. <laughs> of all the random things that it could have generated. But, um... And um, you just use that on gemsaward.com for the game code section. Only we'll use ball and PC mobile version. There goes Gum. Uh, let's see, I'll take that over. Grab our mana. Take a brown over. Do we have the pouting? I guess we might because he's spell reduction on the one, though I think double shot kills regardless. Uh, well, now definitely walk to that. Skull poke. Here we go. Have a paladin. Let him do something for once. <laughs> there you go. You got to kill someone other than a Val Raven. Ha, ah, that's funny. 
Mobarashi. It almost does. Not quite. Let's see what we get from these two orbs, and then we'll have the final major on Thanksgiving. We'll find out if we're thankful for it. <laughs> Hopefully it's a blue. Or at worst, a purple. I definitely much prefer blues these days, though. And, of course, here is the redeem code we just claimed. Um, same blue as always. Two charger maps, one gem key, 200 souls, and 2,500 gold. A little bit of loot, but it helps a little. Especially if you're earlier on in the game. One gem key being the biggest thing, but all of it can help. Anyways, uh, let's go end out with uh, one Explore 12 run. Let's see if we get something good. That will probably call it a wrap for tonight. Uh, let's see. But yeah, I hope all of you have a wonderful, wonderful Thanksgiving tomorrow. And stay safe if you are meeting up with peoples. Uh, where is my... Uh, there it is, Galvania. Where is my... I, I'm losing track of all my teams. They're hiding on me. Your archer class is at 97. Oh, so close. So close to max. Yeah, it can take a while to get those last few levels. They take a, they take a decent amount of time. Uh, 70 is halfway to 100 in this game. As far as hero classes are concerned. Um, level 70 hero class has a, uh, half the XP of level 100. So that point is the halfway point. So 97 is pretty much like all the way there. So close yet so far. Yeah, I'm going to just be having a pretty relaxing Thanksgiving this time. Yeah, it's going to feel weird not traveling during in the holidays. Like when Christmas comes around or New Year's, I would normally go and like see people. But uh, this year, obviously, not so much. <laughs> I'm not sure when I'll ever take a plane again. <laughs> Even like a year from now, I'd still be skeptical probably. It could be a while. Uh, let's see. Let's get, take out the Moa. Which, of course, gives us free gold. I believe it's, um, 500 gold each time. Definitely accumulates a little bit of extra. Uh, don't worry too much if you don't really farm it up much this week, though, because uh, we got a Vault event this weekend. Which is much more valuable to farm than the Moas. But if you are playing this week, um, the Moas still help. Also, I don't think they're going coinciding with each other. Though, if they do, the Gnomes have priority over the Moas. So you won't be losing out on gnomes if it does still go into the event. Uh, is it advisable to use glory to open glory keys? Yes. Um, I would advise always getting the 10 event keys every single week. Which costs 1,800. And at minimum one copy of the glory troop. Or get it all the way to max. Either or. Uh, but as long as you have enough to do that. Any excess is perfectly fine to use on uh, glory keys. Eggnog and spice rum. <laughs> it is literally just um oh yeah, you can't really see what it is can you because it probably looks invisible wait i haven't even been noticing that oh yeah it kind of looks invisible doesn't it i got an invisible bottle look you can't even see what i'm drinking because it's green but uh no it's just mess of mountain dew i just needed some caffeine been kind of tired today Uh, let's see. Man, it's funny. You guys can't actually see what I'm drinking. <laughs> it's the invisible bottle. Because of green screen, of course. And it's green. Yeah, it's fine to use glory on a, uh, glory keys. It's just not the first priority for glory normally. But if you have tens of thousands of excess glory, it's perfectly fine to use some for it. Uh, 
As far as glory is concerned, highest priority is um, buy one copy of whatever the glory troop is. If it's a, a good glory troop, max out the glory troop. Uh, then the next priority is um, uh, buy 10 event keys every single week. And then the priority after that is max out the glory troop regardless of if it's good or not. And then if you have access beyond that, you could use it for glory keys. But that's basically priority order. Is highest priority get one copy of new troop. Second highest being if it's a good troop, get it maxed. Uh, third priority being get 10 event keys uh, for 1,800 glory, 180 each. And then fourth priority is um, get the, um, which is kind of second as well, but uh, get the glory troop regardless of if it's good or not to max. And then fifth priority for glory is use them for glory keys. So it's like lowest priority, but it's still good to use it on it. Yeah, it's pretty much everything that uses glory. I don't think there's anything else is there at that point. Uh, let's see. We'll throw that down. But you have to keep in mind, buying the weekly event trip does give you glory keys. Not as much if you were to go spend glory on glory keys, but it still gives it to you. Am I going to get a lot of sleep before Vault begins? I hope so. Yeah, we're going to be grinding it a decent amount. I don't think we're going to be doing like a ultra long stream like we did last month. But, um, I don't know. We'll maybe consider it. We'll see. Depends how discouraged I am with how bad our keys are doing. Also, after I get an epic Vault key, I'll be like, okay, I'm done. <laughs> it's over. We won. We won all the RNG. We finally got it. Not yet, but uh, hopefully. <laughs> one can hope. Right, we'll go until we get one more chest and then probably call it a night. And then when we wake up, we have Thanksgiving. Yes, there is an epic Valky. It is exceedingly rare. It's only about three times better than a normal Valky. But uh, there's an achievement associated to opening your very first one. And we haven't gotten one yet. And based on data, uh, only 0.3% of people in the entire game have gotten it so far. It is a very, very small amount. But yes, they did a patch uh, several months ago where they buffed all Valkys. As well as a buffed how many you can get. Like, it was all buffs. So I was actually really surprised. Like, they just did pure buffs to Valkys. Um, and they end up adding a brand new key as well. Like, none of it was a nerf to anything. They increased the loot of all Volkies by 20%. Uh, they added a new Volky that's like three times better than a Volky. And they uh, added a pity timer to Vault events, so you will automatically get some amounts of Volkies, assuming you play uh, the event. So even if you get super bad luck, you'll still leave the event with at least a few Volkies, if nothing else. Whereas before, you could farm for like 20 hours and get zero. Whereas now, if you farm for 20 hours, you're at minimum getting, like, probably, like, 8, 7, 8, somewhere around there. Maybe even more. Depends at what rate you're winning. And that's assuming you get zero drops. You would still get that many if you played that long. Though it's based on uh, battles done, not or, you know, our gnomes found. It's not necessarily uh, time spent. Because, obviously, if you are winning quicker, it'd be more than uh, if you are winning slower. But, anyways, let's see what's in the final chest this stream. Anything shiny? Uh, Rainia. We got, like, two Rainias this stream. We didn't, get any, we didn't get any Anus or Nishas. But I believe that was the second Rainia, so... Eh, not too bad. Better than nothing. Could have been better. I can't really complain about Rainias. Still a decent drop. Anyways, guys. Uh, I hope you all have a wonderful Thanksgiving tomorrow. Uh, stay safe out there. Or indoors. Or wherever you're at. <laughs> for it. Um, we'll be back uh, tomorrow, same time as always, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We'll be doing the class event for the very useless Dervish. We'll be messing around with, um, actually, I think we'll be done with the World Lore event. Um, we'll probably throw a little bit of Animal Crossing at the end, just because they have a festive event going on. So, might as well, since Gems of War is not really having too much for the event festivize, other than the little skulls. Maybe we'll get something off Adventure Board and stuff like that. It's going to be pretty small. Um, well, we'll still go and uh, mess around with it, nonetheless. Uh, what base minimum to keep uh, for such glory uh, gems? Uh, generally, I would advise keeping at least 10,000 gems. I know a lot of people aren't at that point yet. 
but I do advise generally once you reach like a later point in the game to hold at least 10,000 gems at any given time in case an update requires a lot of them. And as far as glory, there isn't really a specific glory amount that you would keep. I would say at least 100,000 I wouldn't use below. Um, obviously, you might not be at that point yet. Uh, these are values that I'm referring to when you're like level 1,300 plus or so, uh, like around that range, like way later in the game. Um, so when you're first starting out, you tend to zero out on both of those resources quite often. Like glory will almost uh, will um, almost hit zero, maybe not necessarily hit zero, but definitely could uh, quite often. And gems um, similarly. Um, th these aren't things that you worry about accumulating to really high degrees until a little bit later in the game. Because for your first couple hundred hours of playing the game, um, you should pretty much expect your gems and glory to almost always be zero. Not like exactly zero, but um, it's obviously you can't really accumulate it because you're constantly using it always. Um, but once you start getting um, surpluses of them, uh, or you know, once you start getting a good majority of stuff in the game, once you don't need to like spam keys anymore, uh, and you just get enough from your guilds that you just get those and you don't have to spend gems on them anymore and stuff like that, uh, you start slowly accumulating them over time. And it'll take a uh, little while before you get to that point. But uh, after about a year of playing the game, I would say both of them start to accumulate to a decent amount. Um, really depends on how much you play on, how much you'd really have though. But I would say those are pretty much the values you want to keep. Uh, generally, when it comes to gold, I would say keep 10 million. For glory, 100,000. Souls, probably about a million in case they ever add another Dawnbringer, like Duskbringer. Uh, we don't know if it's going to cost souls, but um, it probably is. So souls is probably good to keep about a million in case they add another Dawnbringer, Duskbringer. Uh, we still haven't gotten confirmation that Duskbringer will cost a million souls, but there's a good chance it will. And for gems, you generally want to hold about 10,000. Uh, those are the values I would generally say. 10 million gold. 100,000 glory, uh, 1 million souls, and 10,000 gems are generally the baseline minimums you want to have for resources at any given time. Obviously, earlier on in the game, that is very much not the case. But once you get much later into the game, uh, it's doable. Especially once you're in a decent guild. Those are the numbers I would say you'd probably want to hold for all of them. Uh, just in case an update ever comes that needs any of them. Um, that's a nice baseline to have for every stat. So the reason why we normally have that about that much gold as well. You'll see that we're around like that amount of points. Uh, we could use it for factions. It's also just a good backup in case an update's like, hey, you got to go use a bunch of millions of gold on this. Instead of having to go out of your way to go use a gold farming team, you can already have some ready to go. Though gold can be accumulated at like 400,000 or so, uh, give or take 100,000 per hour with some gold farming team. So it doesn't take too long to get it. But similar to souls, it can be really annoying. Like you can farm about 50,000 souls per hour, but do you really want to go out of your way to farm 50,000 souls per hour? <laughs> Like, it's a lot of souls, but it's really tedious. Like, super, super tedious. But, uh, let's see. Anything else in chat? Uh, let's see. Da, da, da. You have the 460,000 glory keys? Gosh. I think I'm on, I mean, gold keys. I think I'm only at, like, 250,000. I am, yeah, 250,000, pretty much. I have used some in the past, so I think I used 100,000 at one point or so. But anyways, guys, I'm going to be heading out for now. I hope you all have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Stay safe. And I will catch you guys soon. We'll be back tomorrow night. Same time as always. 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Feel free to leave a like on the stream. Helps out a lot. And I will catch you all Thanksgiving night. Enjoy the holiday. Goodbye, everyone. And thank you for watching.